Hi, I'm Neil and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I took this photograph using one camera on a tripod, two speed lights with some MagMod modifiers on and something else. So, let's crack on. So I hope you're all well and staying safe during this crazy, crazy time. We're still in isolation in the UK, which is still very, very much needed. But again, it is making <laughs> how I shot it videos rather tricky. So what I thought I'd do today is another self-isolation portrait, a follow-up, if you like, to the self-isolation portrait, which I did recently, which I will link to up here. And just like that video with today's photograph, I'm going to talk you through every single step of the process. So the first thing to bear in mind with this photograph is it's a long exposure. I'm probably going to go for an exposure of around seven or eight seconds, I would imagine. So because of that, I'm going to put my camera on a tripod. So I'll be using my Sony A9 with my 16 to 35 mil lens attached. The reason I've got the 16 to 35 on is that I'm going to be relatively close and I'd like it to be quite wide this photograph. The camera also is going to be on a tripod because it's a self-portrait. I can't hold the camera <laughs> and take a photograph of myself at the same time. So obviously as with any photograph we've got to think of the three elements of shutter speed, ISO and aperture. Now I know that I want to kill all the ambient in the room. So because I'm going to be using a long exposure that's going to let a lot of light into the camera and onto the sensor. So I'm going to have to counteract that with my ISO. So my ISO is going to be as low as I can go and the aperture is going to be somewhere I would imagine, I'll, I'll end up knowing this once we actually get to taking the photograph, but I'd imagine around maybe F8, again because I want to try and kill the ambient in the room. Now the other thing to obviously mention is that we've got the lights on in here at the moment for obvious reasons so you can see me. I found that it's very difficult recording videos with the lights completely off. So I have to have the lights on for the purposes of making the video, but when I actually take the photograph just as I did with the video which I linked to previously my first self-isolation portrait when I actually come to taking the shots I'll be turning the lights off and that means that the only light source is going to be coming from the speed lights which we're just about to add the other really important thing to mention is that I'm going to have to pre-focus the camera to make sure that the focus is correct because when I'm stood here I'm not going to be able to focus the camera obviously so in order to help me pre-focus the camera I'm going to place a speed light roughly where I'm going to stand and now I go behind the camera and focus on that speed light first of all I'm going to put the lens into autofocus focus on the speed light and now I'm going to put the lens into manual focus so that means every single time now I press the camera shutter I don't need to look through the viewfinder or look on the back of the camera as long as I'm standing here when the shot's taken, I'm going to be in focus. So the important thing is to remember where you need to stand. And I do that by putting a beer bottle top <laughs> on, the, uh, on the floor here. It's also an excuse so that I can have a beer when I'm recording these videos as well, to be perfectly honest. So we now have the camera set up on the tripod. We've got an eight second exposure, ISO 100 at F8. Now, obviously when I turn the lights out, that is gonna give us a completely black exposure. So the only light source is going to come from the lights that we add. So I'm going to grab one of my Godox V862 speed lights. I love these, they're really easy to use. I'm going to put this one over here and this is going to light me from this side. It's about a 45 degree angle to where I'm going to be standing. Now an important thing to note is that I'm going to be triggering the speed light remotely using my flashpoint trigger. This is an excellent trigger. It allows you to change the power and the zoom of the flash from the trigger itself. So you don't need to go up to the speed light to change the settings. So for the test shot, I just first of all need to press the shutter on the camera. The camera is on a self timer. So that's going to give me 10 seconds to turn the lights off and then stand in position. And then at some point in that 10 second exposure, I'm going to press the trigger and that's setting off the speed light. So let's give that a go. There is no modifier on this speed light at the moment, so the light's going to go everywhere. It's not going to look great, but we'll see what happens. 
Yeah, it does, it looks terrible. But that's not a problem because we're going to now add on a modifier. I should have also just said that I was guessing at the, oh, I've stood on my <laughs> bottle top. I should also have mentioned that I was guessing at the flash power at a quarter power. The speed light as it is, because there's no modifier on there, the lights coming out of it is going all over. So we really need to try and limit the spill of that light so that it's only hitting my head. And if you've watched my videos before, you're probably going to guess what it is I'm going to do next, and that's add a mag mod modifier. So what I'm going to add on is a snoot. The snoots are excellent at limiting the spill of the light, and that's going to mean that we're not going to get light spilling onto the walls, which is gonna make the shot look so, so much better. So the snoot, you can, you can limit how much light comes out of the speed light by using a snoot by how far you pull the snoot out. Now, because this, I'm going to be stood relatively close to the speed light, I think I might be able to just get away with having it maybe just out one level with like something like this. The other great thing about the snoot is that you can put a magma gel directly into the snoot. So as you'll see here, I've decided to put a full CTO gel in this one because I want myself to look a little bit warmer for this shot. So let's just put the snoot onto speed light A and I'm going to do the exact same thing again and take another test shot and we're gonna see what the difference is now that we've got a modifier on that speed light. I'm expecting it to look much better this time. Yeah, it does. That looks loads better. So what I'm now going to do is add a second speed light. So to light me from this side, I'm going to use my Godox AD200. This is a really powerful speed light. We don't need anything like its power for this shot. So I'm gonna put that there. And the key thing is I'm putting it exactly opposite to speed light A. So this one, flash B, is also going to have a snoot on. It's also got another full CTO gel in the snoot and it's going to be on a quarter power and I just need to make sure that it's the same distance away from me as this one. Now the hardest thing when it comes to setting something like this up when you're using a snoot is just making sure that you're stood in the right place and that the speed lights are aiming at you correctly because you can see if I, if I show you this here the actual area that the light comes out of is very small so it's very easy to miss <laughs> it's like your head is a target so I just need to just make sure that they're in the correct places. It looks as though they are. So I'll do another test shot now with both speed lights on. So that's A and B. I'll just make sure that they're going to trigger. Nope. Turning the speed light on always helps. I've learned that over the years. Yeah, perfect. You also get a little bit blinded when you do this. So I'm not going to turn, turn the camera on, turn the lights off, and then we'll see what we get. Yeah, that looks absolutely brilliant. As you can see, we've managed to light just my face with very, very little spill anywhere else in the frame, and that's perfect. So we've got a really good base now. Now the thing to bear in mind, because we're using a very long exposure of eight seconds, any light source that hits the sensor within that time is going to imprint itself onto the sensor. Now for this, I'm going to use these Christmas lights. So these are just cheap Christmas lights bought off Amazon. The good thing about these is that the lights are not very bright. That means that we're not going to get any overexposed highlights when we're using them. But also what I really love is that they have this attached battery compartment, which contains two AA batteries, so you don't need to plug them in on the wall. So they're gonna be perfect for this photograph, because I want this photograph to sort of represent imprisonment because of the situation that we're in. So when I swirl these round, it's going to create lines around me, which I think is going to sort of illustrate that point. So what I'm going to do now is show you a shot which I'm going to take where I'm just swirling the lights round just to show you what we get when we do that. Because we're using a long exposure, when we do this, these lights are just going to become light trails on the photo. It's gonna look really effective. This in effect is light painting. So I'm gonna turn the camera on. We're going to have our 10 second countdown. That's really cool. That shows you the potential of what it is we're trying to create here. This is where it gets a little bit tricky though, because when I swirl the lights around like this, I don't want them on the photograph to overlap my face, because if I do, it's not going to give me the effect that I want. There's no way I'm gonna be good enough to get this in one or two shots. It could take me hours. So again, just to tell you now, 
what the exact process is going to be while the lights are on. I'm going to keep these lights permanently on now and in my hand. I'm going to hold my trigger in my left hand. And as you saw before, any time I press the trigger, the speed lights are going to go off. And that's going to imprint my face onto the sensor. So the process is going to be to turn the camera shutter on. I'm going to have 10 seconds then. And then I'm going to turn the lights in the room off. And then I'm going to just start doing this. And then when the exposure starts, I'm just going to keep on doing this for probably about five seconds. And then at some point, I'm then going to just pause and press the trigger and that's going to be the end of the exposure. And probably repeat that <laughs> how many times, I don't know, probably quite a few. If I can get this on the first attempt, it will be an absolute miracle. Oh, that, that took a good few goes, but I think I got there. Basically, when you're doing something like that, it takes a lot of trial and error, because as you'll see now with some of the attempts that I'll show you on the screen, sometimes when I was whacking the, the lights round, there was too big a gap above my head, sometimes it was way to the side, so it took me a few goes just to learn how to do this so that it was just going around my head, and then I had to tinker with my settings a little bit. I ended up going down to ISO 50 and going to F10 as well, and I also moved the speed lights a little bit I moved this one a little bit closer and I also moved this one as well just repositioned it because I was getting some of the speed light hitting the wall so I had to reposition the speed light so that it wasn't hitting the wall because when it did that would have interfered with the background so I think I got quite a few images that I quite like but I think this is the one that I'm going to try and edit I'm really pleased with this one now usually at this stage in a video, I would ask you to please like the video and subscribe to my channel and I will still love you to do that. I always would love you to do that. But this is also the first time or the first video where I'm going to be announcing that I have now just opened a Patreon account, which I'm really excited about because that's going to give me more opportunity to share even more behind the scenes with you, more how I shot it videos and more wedding photography advice and basically everything that I do. The link is in the description. There are already videos on there which are exclusive to Patreon. So I hope that that will be of interest to lots of you. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please pop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer all of them for you. So thank you very much again for watching. Stay safe and I will see you next time.